Hey, hey, hey. Sunday night. Here we are again. It's a rainy Sunday down here in Alabama. Come on in. Let's take a few moments. Center our energy for the week. What a great weekend. Come on in. Definitely. Really great weekend. It's raining, pouring, a little chilly again. We had a beautiful week of sunshine, daffodils blooming, jonquils coming up. Yeah. And today now, feeling a little cool. Come on in. Join me. Focus our energy for the week. See what's going on. Just wanted to start and give a huge shout out to Emily Mayer and Annie Damsky for the Fearless Own Festival. What an amazing weekend. Really, really amazing weekend of pulling a community together. It was really awesome. Yeah, I talked about it on the podcast about what that was about. If you didn't hear it last week, go back and check it out and see how these things can help you in your own community if you're not here locally. But wow, what a great weekend pulling teachers and people and just pulling them together and showing them all the many aspects that yoga has to offer. Yoga, spirituality, intuition, compassion, being fearless, being truthful, being honest with yourself and where you are. Yeah, that's kind of what we're going to talk about tonight. Like, where are you right now? Here we are coming out at the end of winter. Yay, right? Where are you? Where is your energy? But I really, I just have to give a huge shout out to them. They did such an amazing job. I was there this morning. I was able to teach one of my energy and yoga and sound and classes started with that and then I got to share my jewelry and my energy and just talk to everybody and so much greatness going on really 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 that's how we expand our city that's how we expand our community it was really great so yeah I just I really it's finishing up now I had to leave I think they're finishing with a meta meditation up at the summit a meta meditation is just like love and compassion right that's exactly what their weekend was about having compassion for each other for ourselves especially let it beginning with ourselves and so i just kind of offer you that too come on in hey patrick and vicky joining us hey vicky we missed you this is a beautiful thing for our community hey brooke who else is here kimberly adrian millie all right guys rainy huh we're inside yeah so just for a moment think about it for yourself where are you right now where is that compassion energy for yourself? How was the year for you or the uh, season for you? How was winter? Was it hard, right? Was it really, was it difficult for you? Has it dimmed your spirit a little bit now that it's time to open up? Are you struggling a little bit? Do you need encouragement? Where is it? Where is it for you? And just ask you that question right now to think about it. Think about where you are, what is going on for you can you believe March is next week? Amazing, right? So yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about that, being where we are right now. How is the season for you? How has that change? Where can you show up for yourselves? I know for me that winter can be difficult. I know that it can be challenging and many times, oh, it's like, oh, do I really want to come out? Yes, do I not? You know, it's just like we get used to kind of being in. I know I do. So where is it for you? All right, I found it here on Facebook. Let me go ahead and share this out. And maybe you'll do the same. Share it with somebody you know may need some help. Let's see here. Share. I'm going to share it in my group. If you're not in the group, come on over to the Empowered Spirit Circle. Going to be offering some challenges coming up. I love to do this during the year. I mean, during this time of year, coming out of winter into spring. Let me share it one more time so I'm not... I can only do one thing at a time right now. How about that? Okay, here we go. Share it in the feed. Share it in the group. There you go. All right. Thank you. Maybe you'll share it too as you come in and say hello. So, trapped inside with the flu. Oh, no. Hey, sorry to hear that. Hey, essential oils, essential oils, essential oils. Feet. Rub them on the feet. Rub them in the webs of your hands. Get somebody to rub them down the back. Come in for a session. Yes, an aroma Reiki session. Perfect for that really helps to move that energy. You do have a lot going on. Don't let it get stuck. All right. I see another comment too. Always anxious. Yeah. You know, that time of year, this time of year can do that going from winter to spring, Patrick. Sometimes it can, sometimes it can make us either really anxious, depressed or anxious, excited, or I don't know exactly where you are on that, but it's like spring, there is a lot of energy going forward. So really kind of shifting the energy around, asking for that kind of guidance for yourself and where you need to be. We've been having or we've been moving through lots and lots and lots of intense energy, right? I mean, 
January with the full moon starting out and that eclipse in the middle. And now we just had that eclipse again. At least we're moving through some of that energy. All right. But it is a little intense. And winter was cold. It was fast. It was hard for a lot of people all over the country. And even matching my own energy and how I felt. That's how it was for me, too. So moving out of winter and into spring is really important. And being a little, I don't know, proactive a little bit. I think just really kind of being proactive, but being in that present moment, like knowing where you are. That's where that compassion comes in. Okay, I'm anxious. Let me have compassion for that anxiety. Let me like say, thanks for showing up. Where is that coming from? What do I need to do to settle that anxiety for myself? What is that buried with, right? We look at that. Or maybe you are feeling, I know for me a few weeks ago, I was feeling a little bit like, like I needed encouragement to continue on. I need encouragement to help with my mom. I need encouragement to continue my day to day because some of it had gotten full of responsibility. And so facing it and offering a little bit of that light can help us understand and also can help us see what we need to do in order to lift us up to start to move out into spring. I know for me, part of it was cleaning up my diet. I've been doing a cleanse, getting off of some of those addictive habits that we in, you know, like that we have, find ourselves in, you know, like having a wine, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, yeah, trying to change the food. All right. Chocolate was kind of following me around since Valentine's Day, right? That kind of thing. So we start to change up our diet. We start to eat greener, a little cleaner, do a little more juicing this time of year, just to kind of wake up the system, right? We're going to move into that time of liver, right? We need to cleanse the liver. This is the best time to do that. These are some of the things that help shift our energy, shift our awareness. It also creates a nice flow of energy through the lymphatics and through the digestive tract when we do cleanses. That helps us to come into alignment with the season we're in. And then we can deal with some of that excess energy. All right. And that's a lot of times what happens. I know for me, I was um, anticipating a lot of things. Got to get this done. Got to get this done. And the anticipation <laughs> was worse than the chore that had to be done. Right. If I would just break it down and not anticipate I got it done and quicker, right? So sometimes we have to look at where that energy is coming around. All right, I got a thumbs up on that one. I got a, um, let's see, what other comments? Always excited. All right. When winter's been a little hard, so I'm more than ready for the change. Yeah, Kimberly, I hear you on that. Love you, Thelma. You too. Yeah, so that's kind of where we are right now. And as we move through this week, this week is really a time to kind of ascertain where you are, right? We have a full moon. It's actually the March full moon because there's no full moon in February. But we really can't tell because we're moving through the week. Hey, Lori. But we're going to feel that on Thursday, all right? So we have a little bit of time right now to kind of go like, okay, we're finishing February. What do I feel like? Where am I? Where do I need to step up to my plate, right? That kind of energy. Where do I need to pull back? I mean, we're looking at really where is that balance and where is that moderation, which is actually what showed up in the cards for us today. So really some good cards to really look at that. Then as we move into Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we've got a little dreamy energy coming in, right? We're going to be bouncing back a little bit on Monday, like dreamy, practical, no dreamy, practical, dreamy, back and forth, right? And we got that big old full moon coming in on Thursday, right as we open up into March right and then by the end of the week we're going to be able to process better we have a kind of fun weekend coming up too with energy so yeah it is a time to kind of start to prepare for coming out of spring and ask yourself like what is it you need to do really look at that kind of energy and again that compassion for yourself don't judge it just kind of be aware of it right it's not good or bad it's like where we were right sometimes we just need different things in our lives during the different seasons, right? I need different comforts in winter than I do in spring. I recognize that. So some of what we bring forward is recognizing where we are. So I think it's a really good week to do that. This week on my podcast, I actually talk about being in that spiritual experience. I'm actually sharing a story, something I wanted to do with my podcast, kind of breaking away from the interview this week and sharing a spiritual experience. Some of you have heard me talk about it, but I put it into a little bit of a understanding for me a spiritual story to come forward with and it reminds us to really kind of look for those experiences in our life look for where we are even now when we find things are a little challenging like what are those experiences showing us where have we felt this before where are we carrying through with this energy that's kind of what the podcast will be about this week it airs on wednesday and it's short, but it's just, it's experience. It's about having spiritual experiences. How many of you guys have had a spiritual experience where like everything just lines up? Or maybe you've had aha moments, right? I'm going to be asking to hear about those. I would like to know if you have found yourself with one of those spiritual experiences as well. So the podcast, that'll air on Wednesday. I'm excited to share that. I really am. It's something I've been wanting to do. And 
Yeah, there is vulnerability, but you know what? That's where we're at, right? Sharing our stories and talking about what we're doing and trying things out. And that's what it's about, right? A friend of mine, Brad Powell, was on Facebook Live. He's my video coach guy. And, and one of his coaches, um, Shannon, Shannon Jones, I think it is, Shannon, beautiful Shannon. And they were doing a podcast with him talking about vulnerability, talking about how men show up. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was like, yeah, this is what we're talking about now. This is where we're being real. This is where we're creating those boundaries in order to talk up, in order to know where we are and where we stand with each other. Doesn't mean that we don't love each other when we have boundaries. Actually, it's more loving. It really is. And that's kind of, you know, where I kind of go with this on, on Wednesday with the podcast. So you'll hear it and you'll let me know what you think. And I'm asking if you have one, you'll share one with me as well. All right. So before we jump into the meditation, which is just going to be about being present with energy, just to kind of a little re review the energy as we move in, we're going to have a little push-pull energy coming in tomorrow. We're going to be in between that grounding practical and the, the dreamy, intuitive energy back and forth. Tuesday, Wednesday, energy builds. Okay. That we know what that means with the full moon for most of us means a little bit of excess emotional energy coming forward. So just being aware, look for it outside, all right? Always a good time. That full moon reminds us, cleanse our crystals. You don't have to, but it's a good reminder to. And let it just bathe in that light, that beautiful, intuitive, feminine light. Why not, right? So that'll be on Thursday. And then as we move towards the weekend, it'll be a little bit more easier and more social, more lighter weekend ahead of us. All right, so let's just take a moment and pull our energy together. Let's take a moment and just bring that presence of where you are right now, which is really the focus. All right, so if you can, just come into Namaste Mudra, hand at the heart, take a nice deep inhale, light a little sage, and just exhale out. Close the eyes as you inhale. And exhale, send that breath down deep into the earth, all the way down, inhaling. And exhaling. Let us just call in divine spirit, our masters, our teachers, the archangels, call in your spirit guides. As to be grounded, protected, surrounded with love, as you move through this week, call in for compassion for yourself and for where you are right now. Take another deep inhale and exhale, just centering the energy. And if you can, just open the eyes up, one-tenth open, all right, just a little bit. That helps stimulate the pituitary gland. So just out of the corner of your eyes, see the hands as you continue the breath for a few more, inhaling and exhaling sending the breath deep into the earth open that vertical channel inhaling and exhaling and just taking a moment offering gratitude for where you are right now here we sit right here at the very edge of the season of winter so begin to prepare to crack through those shells, crack through the ground, opening up, manifesting for the spring, our dreams, all those things that have been brewing underneath the surface. Inhaling and exhaling. Send that energy deep into the earth, centering your energy, feeling the feet on the floor, just opening the eyes, coming back. Notice how you're feeling. Good. So the cards today, I asked the question about like, what is it you need for the spring, right? What can help some guidance for moving into that season for the spring? So we're just gonna kind of open that energy up for us and look at the cards. So the card that is the um, indicator card here for all of us, the universal card, I love this. It's the Eight of Pentacles, which is a really great card for all of us to be able to work with, especially to keep this in mind for coming into the spring season. So the Eights, first and foremost, I love because it represents that infinity, right? That infinite potential. All right, and so when we apply it to the Pentacles, 
That's about our craft. That's about building our skills. And it's also about being abundant. So this is a time to start maybe getting a little bit more into the practical aspects of your work, getting into that details, getting into the things that you need to do, even actually writing and starting to build more of that craft for you. So that actually helps us to ground into the physical part of our life, which many times helps to remove or release or move energy right? Emotions, energy, emotion. So as we do something, so this is a very positive card for the work that you've been doing. Now, if you're stuck in like, oh, I don't have anything I'm doing, this is the perfect time to also begin a new skill. All right. But for most of us, this is all about that infinite, pos infinite, infinite possibility of moving forward now as we move into the spring season, build that web and also to sending that etheric web out all right, if you have work that you're doing of service to others, right, offering your work, imagining that that um, spider web going out to those that need your work, send it out there and imagine it attracting those that need your work and need your service right now. Another way to use that card. Now, how do we do that, right? That's what we're choosing one, two, and three. All right, so if you drew card number one, this is a major arcana. This is the temperance card. All right, so when we draw the major arcana, that means there's a little bit more of that importance of the work. It's a major, right? This is like really going to the depths of this. So the temperance card is about moderation, what we were talking about before, moderating, finding the balance, balancing those opposing elements, all right? This is a very healing card as well. Sometimes we can have too much excess energy going on at this time. Maybe it's too much emotion or like you had said, Patrick, maybe it's too much anxiety. So what is that opposing element? All right, finding that opposing element to temper it. I know with metals, it always reminds me of metal smithing, all right? With the silver, when you put that heat to the silver, it changes it, right? So where can you shift the energy for yourself? What is the opposing element, all right? Look at here, look at the colors here. Look at that fire that he's holding. Look at the blues around it, all right? So what are your opposing elements right now that you can bring back into moderation so that you can do this kind of work, all right? So look at your life. I know for me lately, it was like really moderating my breath. That led to so much. I was too much on the on the um, really heavy exhale and a really pushing inhale. So when I began to change that up and calm that exhale, quiet that exhale, so much shifted for me. So that was a way to moderate and temper, temper my breath, which was my yoga practice and my life and how I was responding people. Also with diet, with cleansing, right? Where are you in excess right now? Where can you bring those elements back in? Perfect time to cleanse, all right? We talked about that. Really cutting out some of that excessive energy is gonna help you be in better alignment physically, mentally, spiritually to move forward and really build that craft for you. So that was the first card, number one. All right, the second card, if you chose number two, the second card is the Mother of Swords. So this can be a great card because this is one that's really good at details, really good at looking at it, really has a lot of wisdom. Now, the problem with this is that this can also lead a little bit to critical judgment on oneself, all right? So being careful that you're not getting into the critical judgment of it. Sometimes that happens in isolation, which could be happen in winter, right? We, we tend to have that loneliness going on. The days are shorter. We're inside more. So sometimes we have to be careful with this, that we are getting a little too critical of the mind, all right? So in order for you to be able to move forward with this, this card is asking you to make sure you're not being too critical. Have that wisdom, have that perception, and even the fine details, but now to do some action, which is the pentacles, the earth part of this. Being sure to do that and making sure you're not being too critical, right? That self-talk, we can get into it really easy. All right? If you drew card number three, this is also a sword. So it's really reminding us this reading of the mental plane, not getting too much into the brain and the thoughts and all that chatter that we do. So this card, the third card is the four of swords. Now this card is really reminding us to really get into that part of us, the intuitive part. All right, be careful of this. We don't want those swords falling down, right? Really don't. So making sure that you still take some time. All right, this is a really good one for me. Take some time, spend extra minutes. All right, I'm building my meditation back up. Spend extra minutes in meditating. Being still, being here, not in here. Again, reminding us not to get in the chatter of the mind. When we can do that, then we're going to be able to go forward. Too much chatter, too much thoughts, drop down, right? We won't be able to go here. But when we can stay with that balance, fours are about balance, grounding, rest, right? Then we can get into the work that we need to do for our spring work. 
All right, so those are the cards that we have for this week. So overall, I think they're really good guidance for us, right? Because, yeah, it's time. Get out there. We're starting to come out there. Now, you don't have to run out the gate tomorrow, right? We're not talking about get, get, get. But we're talking about start to wake up. I mean, I like to compare it to nature. Think about that little old seed that's down there. It's got a hard shell when it first starts out. It's starting to poke through, right? So where can you start to open up to? Where can you start to poke your head out, all right? I got a thumbs up for that. So if you're in a little bit excess of energy, right, moderate, heal, go deep, all right, it's a major arcana, so go deeper than surface level, go into some of those deep-rooted issues that you have going on, and maybe the winter brings it up, right? Time to release the energy by balancing it through moderation and bringing it forward. Healing time, some more healing time. And we're still in winter, so we're, we're good to heal, right? That kind of thing. I love it. Then the second card was about the, the Mother of Swords, right? Remembering not to get too critical, all right? Use it for, for details and organizing and being able to see the bigger picture and the wisdom, but be careful that you're not self-challenging yourself, self-sabotaging with that picky, 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 all right? And then the fourth card again, too, is making time to find that balance through meditation, through opening the intuitive center. Yes, 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 yes. Find that balance for that. I love this. It. a really nice grounded card. Don't let the swords drop on you, right? Don't do that. You want to be able to open up and see. Definitely. So really great cards for us coming forward. Really great cards. And if you are, if you are like stuck in how do I get into my intuitive mind, I did want to say that I'm going to be doing a group program. Very excited. The Empowered Spirit Program. Um, I will be offering that coming in the spring. So if you're interested, go to my website, terryannhyman.com. There's a place that you can sign up if you're more into, if you're interested in getting more information. It's a group program. Be on Zoom. It'll be, it'll be similar to my one-on-one -on -one program, but a little different, all right? So definitely, you can find out more about your intuitive abilities. All right, we've had some people asking for cards. Brooke would like one. A would like one, too. All right, guys, take a deep inhale. I'm going to let these cards set out for all of us, and then these are additional cards. All right, this one is for Brooke, then A, then Thelma, then Z. All right, Brooke. All right, Brooke, I got... Actually, very interesting because two cards came out at the same time. And look at this. This is what they look like. One was upside down. One was right side up. So they were trees. So, Brooke, already I'm going to ask you, is there a little bit? And it's the emperor and the empress. How, how funny is that? I've, shook, I've shuffled these cards so much. All right. So I think that's kind of a kind of a very interesting thing for you, Brooke. It's like being sure that you're balancing where you are, not getting into one area too much or the other. All right. The upside down card is the empress. So... It might suggest that some of that Empress energy needs to come back around, all right? So I think it's kind of interesting that you've got the Emperor and the Empress. One is upside down, one is right side up. It is, to me, for you, it's almost like, you know, where are you this week? Are you in balance or not? This is what it's asking you to look at. Where can you bring that around? And I guess really that would be kind of like the matching. So where can you turn over some of that Empress energy? Are you giving your power away, especially your intuitive power, Brooke? That's the question I'm going to ask you. Are you giving that away? All right. Remind yourself to be strong in that intuitive energy. All right. As we go through that full moon this weekend too, open up to that energy. All right. Connect with Mother Earth. I know you probably have been, especially last week. I hope you were out there at the lake, but that's important. I love that both of those cards came up at the same time. Okay. We got a ha. Wow. All right. I think the next card was A. All right. A. Here's one coming for you. The Four of Wands. All right. So, A, this was card here. It was reversed. So, some of this energy is still underneath. But there's a vision coming forward for you. All right. There's definitely a vision. See that inside? So, some more intuitive work needs to come forward for you because it was in the reverse position. Wands are about our passions and desires. So, there's something brewing. All right. Look at the outside. The fires, the colors. Look at the inside. Look how pretty that is for you. All right, so there is vision there. Let it open up. Let it grow. Don't close it down, all right? And maybe sometimes when we're low of energy, we want to give up or we, we don't, right? Low on resources. But don't give up, all right? Just keep working it and it's going to start to turn out and that vision is going to open up more for you. I hope that makes sense, all right? All right, let's see. Thelma's next. Hope that makes sense, eh? Give me a thumbs up. Let me know. All right, Thelma. Thelma, you got the mother of wands. This is some... Interesting energy here because look at that protection energy. All right, look, it's almost like she's guarding her babies there. So the mother does that, but it's also with passion, 
with desires, with really knowing that part of energy there. So there is some protective energy going on for you right now, protecting others. All right. So when we do that, we just have to remind ourselves to protect ourselves well or ourselves as well. Right. But look at that. That's about the energy of that mother energy, really knowing what those passions and desires are in your life, because it is about the wands. Look at the colors behind it, the reds, the fires, lifting that energy for you right now. And again, being careful too. I think it also reminds us too of not to take more care of others than ourselves. All right. Really, really important. Okay. Very important. All right, Laurie. Miss Lori Z, Z Girl Astrology. She's going to be back soon. Got to get her back on air. All right, let's see, Miss Lori. Lori, you had the world last, last time. You got the Justice card, but it was upside down. All right, so protective energy there. All right, also, you know, finding that balance. And that's where we're coming, right into the spring equinox. But there is something that is a little bit there. All right, and maybe it's some leftover energy from your birthday, right? Sometimes we can feel a little bit, right? I know those feelings, melancholy, out of balance. So, yeah, I keep up, down, up, down. But I think it's interesting that when we look at this card, it, it's also to, I think sometimes do it to, it, it can remind us to find those moments in our life, those aha moments as well, all right? It's like, where can that come back into balance for you? Sometimes we can go back into one side or the other, and it doesn't always have to be black and white. So where is that for you? All right. Some of that energy for you to look at. I love the two cats. I love the way they're looking at each other. All right. But I think even though it's there, that sometimes we can get caught in that gray energy. And I think that's what that reversal was for you. Don't get caught in that. All right. Where is that color? Where is that pop for you? All right. Yes, it's definitely there for you. I know. All right, Millie. All right. All right. Tell me how that felt, Laurie. All right, Millie, I'm drawing a card for you. We missed you today. Yes, Annie asked about you too. All right, this is the judgment card. All right, sorry, I got a little scratch in my eye there. This is a judgment card for you, Millie. So this card reminds us that, oh, look at the angel up there. It's almost like that opening of energy, letting go of judgment, opening up to a bigger part of what's going on. Really important right now. It's also like that aha moment too. It's like wake up and just like there is a lot going on. It can look like a lot of darkness at the end of winter, but really it's just like open up to the energy that's above us. Open up to the higher dimensions. All right, really important. And this is a major arcana. It's 20. All right, so it's interesting energy right now coming in. But I think in some ways we can take a step back when we have this card and go, okay, what is that aha moment for me? What is that awakening for me that I need right now, especially as we move out of winter? All right, so where is that for you? Don't get stuck here. Open the energy up. Open that vertical channel of light for you. Like open up and, and move out there. Hey, I saw you were doing B-School school again. Maybe that could be some of that inspiration. But this is more of that waking up to the aha energy, all right? Definitely. All right, let's see. Who else? Patrick. Brooke says thank you. All right, Brooke, I hope that was helpful. Very interesting, right? Yes, I owe you a phone call too, by the way. All right, Patrick. All right, Patrick, we got the five of wands for you. So some change coming, all right? So maybe there's that underlying energy that you're feeling coming out. There's some change coming. I like when change comes around. It helps us open our energy. Now, I like the fact that it's of the wands, not swords. It's of the wands because that's our passions and our desires. So, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know, but spring is a great time to open up to new ideas, new dreams, and Maybe that this winter you've been building some of that energy up for you. I hope you have because that's what we do in winter, right? And now it's time to open up to the change. Change can make us anxious, but just know it's just a shift and just allow yourself to get on the edge of that. It's good for your creative energy, right? When we can stand on the edge a little bit, it can help open us up and take us to that next level. And if we go back to the original card, right, this is where we're going. This is a great card for all of us, right? So open up to the change and maybe see if that anxiety is just a nervousness and newness, or if it is like a bigger change. I don't know. What is it for you? What is it? Let us know. All right. Ace says, perfect. Thank you. Blessings. Perfect. Lori says, missed us too. Yeah, I missed you too, guys. Uh, Millie too. All right, we had some really great cards come forward. Some good energy is coming around. I really do believe that sometimes it can be hard moving from winter to spring. So noticing where you are, making some changes in your spiritual practice, right? 
making some changes in your physical practice, your eating, all of that is really good right now as you move through. I'll be offering the spring equinox. We still have several weeks, but I think it's a good idea to, to um, start to open up your energy. Work with yourself for that. I think it's really important to do that. I'm going to be offering a five-day challenge. I think we're going to be doing it. I've just kind of put it out there. Maybe we'll start it right at the spring just to get us all on the same page with with creating that spiritual practice for us. So look for that in the Empowered Spirit uh, Circle. If you're not in there, come on over, join us. I'll be talking about it in there and offering some support as well. All right, what else is going on? This week on Wednesday is my spiritual experience. Yes, check it out on the Empowered Spirit Show. I've also been I'm interviewing some new spiritual authors. I'm very excited to have them on the show. Very excited for that. Those will be coming up in March as well. All right, if there's anything else I forgot, Find me on Facebook. Let me know how you're doing. Keep it up, guys. Pull that energy forward. Get outside when you can. Get in some daffodil energy. It really helps to open us up and feel more blessed in our lives and gratitude all around us. So thanks again for joining me tonight. Someone says we'll have to wait and see. All right, Patrick, we'll see what happens. All right, guys. Thanks again for joining me. Have a great week. Look forward to that full moon. Honor it. It'll make you feel better in many ways. To your spirit, namaste.